Welcome to MOOC course on introduction to proteogenomics. So, we are proceeding from the protein quantification running on the SDS page gel, doing the sample cleanup, peptide quantification. Now, you are ready to inject the sample in the LC liquid chromatography followed by the MS analysis. So, now it comes the liquid chromatography. Here you, we are using reverse space column C18 material. Peptides are going to bind to the column and then you want to elude the peptide based on the hydrophobic hydrophilic properties. So, you will use a different gradient using estonitrile uh, 5 percent to 80 percent or you can go even up to 90 percent with 0.1 percent formic acid. And this concept I have already you know, briefed in the beginning in the previous lecture. So, I am not repeating again, but you need to pay attention to the parameters for uh, what should be the best gradient for doing the uh, liquid chromatography. So, what is shown on the screen here is again a refresher we talked earlier as well that you, you will use different parameters depending on the kind of sample you have and you would like to achieve a good Gaussian distribution of the peptides which are eluted from the column. You would like to see that you know very soon maybe after 5 to 10 minutes time peptides start eluting out of the column. Then after as you increase the gradient of estonitrile more and more peptides are coming out of the column and eventually once you have reached to the saturation level then finally all the peptides are out of the column and you are then washing and recalibrating it being ready for the next injection. So, that ideal uh, setup should give you a Gaussian distribution of good intensity of the all the peptides. One need to play with this parameters, but again shown here that you need to work on each of these and now let us we will talk more about these parameters in the lab session. Hello, so here I am going to explain about mass spectrometry. So, basically there are main two component one is liquid chromatography another is mass spectrometry. So, I am going to explain first about liquid chromatography. So, here you can see there are main two solvent which is one solvent A which having a 0.1 percent formic acid. Another is for solvent B which is 80 percent ACN in 0.1 percent formic acid. Now, here if you see this screen, now here you can see there is pump A and this is pump B. Basically, which regulate the flow of solvent A and then solvent B. This is another pump which is pump S. It control the taking of the sample that how much amount of the sample has to be injected that will be controlled by pump S. So, here I am inject, uh, injecting the tray where you can keep your sample. Now, here you can see this plate ok and this is vial where you can keep your sample. So, generally here we are loading around 1 microgram accordingly you can calculate the amount of volume how much you have to inject in mass spectrometry. Now, you are familiar with the liquid chromatography and how nano LC can be used, how different parameters, different firms are important, keeping a watch on the pressure is very crucial. Now, you are ready for injection with the electrospray annihilation. This is the very crucial part because now all your peptides have converted to the gaseous ionized forms and they have to move it inside the mass analyzers for further analysis. So, various settings and again the voltage these criteria are important and you are going to learn more about them in the lab session, but briefly refreshing you here again that while all these uh, ions are coming your major effort is most of them can you move them inside the mass analyzer and that is where the pressure and the charge these parameters are very crucial and you need to make sure that most of the ions are actually going inside the mass analyzer otherwise the proteome coverage will be affected. So, next let us uh, assume that you know you are you have done a good uh, electrospray ionization, then you are ready to separate these ions inside the mass analyzer. There could be different type of mass analyzers and different type of mass spec configuration. For example, we can have you know uh, ESI QTOF a popular configuration or Orbitrap. In this case, we are going to talk about Orbitrap fusion technology which is having a tribrid mass spectrometer and let us have a laboratory session about using orbital fusion technology and different parameters for MS and MSMS analysis. Once you have kept your sample in nano LC and then you will monitor through the software. So, your sample will go through this tube and this is first column which is pre column where your sample will start to clean up. 
basically desalting and your peptide will start to bind in this column and then waste will go through this tube into a waste beaker. Now once your sample will be cleaned in the pre column then second column which is analytical column then your sample will start pass through this analytic column and they will start to fractionate and slowly the first hydrophilic peptide will start to elute and then hydrophobic peptide will start to come. So once your sample will start to elute from this tip of column if you can see here and then it will start get ionized. Now here we are applying voltage around 2.2 kilovolt and, and your sample like high, highly charged and they will start to elute. Now here I am going to explain parameter for MS. So this is MSOT. So this is the parameter for the MS where I keep in orbit rate resolution around 60,000. Scan range 375 to 1700 MIG. So generally for peptide it is uh, enough uh, that is uh, that is optimized. RF lens I keep in 16. AGC target is like uh, automatic gain control like how many ions you want to accumulate so that you have to define which I am keeping here around 4.0 e to power 5. Maximum injection time is 50 millisecond and quality is positive because our peptides ionize and they are positively charged. In intensity, you have to define the intensity, how much intensity threshold should be there, which is 5.0 e to power 3. Now, generally, peptide is charged, so I have to define how much charge should be there, the range of charge basically. Now, here you can see 2 to 6, I am keeping. It will not take a uh, singly charge and then more than 6, it will consider only 2 to 6 charge peptide and then I am defining dynamic exclusion which is 40 second here, mass tolerance should be in KPM and this is the parameter for the MSMS now where I am keeping isolation window is 1.2. Now because the MS is happening on the peptide, now those peptides have to be fragmented and for that I am using the SCD cell high collision dissociation. And energy collision, energy mode set that is a fix and this is the energy which I am applying for the fragmentation for our peptide. And the detector is here is orbit rep and the resolution for the MSMS is 15,000 and first mass which has to be detected is 100. So these are the like parameter which I have shown you, these are the like already optimized for the level 3 quantitation. If you are using like different different type of technique, if you are using the label based in case of eye track and NKMT, accordingly those parameter will be changed. So accordingly you can do it change. So this was the parameter for the LC and then MS parameter. Okay, so now you are familiar that how you can use different parameters and settings for the MS and MSMS analysis. After doing the, a good run from these experiments from the same sample, now you will see these chromatograms which is shown here on the screen which shows that you know the time versus the intensity of these peptides. And as I mentioned, you would like to see a, a good Gaussian distribution of the peptides coming out of you know from your sample. Now from this sample, how to make sense of this information that you know what these proteins are. So if you remember that we talked briefly about you know looking at B and Y ions. So again if you uh, keep looking at walking through the entire chromatograms, you will see the pattern of the spectra which will give you a good idea for you know the B ion, Y ion and various ions that are generated. And now you can use this information for the further database search. So let us have another lab session to discuss more about these chromatograms and uh, looking at these data. So till now we have seen the different liquid chromatography parameters and the mass spectrometry parameters required for the success of a LCMS experiment. So as you now know that the charged species enter into the mass spectrometer and get fragmented. These fragments are then detected and by use of a suitable software, the identification of the peptide is revealed. However, just by looking at the chromatogram, one can easily deduce whether the sample run was good enough for it to be taken to further analysis. Let us now take a look at the example of a very good chromatogram. On the screen, we see a very Gaussian distribution of the peptides. This is the MS1 chromatogram. That means all the peptides which have entered into the mass spectrometer as charged species have got detected at the MS1 level. Further, based on the abundance of each of these peptides, they are fragmented at the MS2 level and detected. 
it is to be noted that most of the peptides which are less abundant are likely to be ignored and only the high abundant peptides get fragmented so the bottom panel shows the ms2 fragmentation pattern for the selected peak so if you can see here this is the ms2 pattern for the selected peak so you see different fragments which have been generated and also the signal is relatively less noisy this helps in better interpretation of the data for the software so we now move to another chromatogram which is not that great so on the screen if you try to correlate if you try to compare this chromatogram to the chromatogram which was previously shown you can very clearly see that the distribution of the peptides is not a gaussian distribution also you see that there are gaps in the chromatogram which are indicative of issues with the sample and with the electro spray ionization so there are certain segments of the chromatogram where probably nothing entered into the mass spectrometer or the the peptides did not get ionized properly for them to be detected by the mass spectrometer if you now look at the ms2 pattern the ms2 here has significantly less number of fragments which is a feature of a very bad chromatogram resulting from a very bad sample this issue could have been due to improper handling of the sample or due to issues with the column but this is the basic information that one can deduce from merely looking at the chromatogram at the ms1 level and the ms2 level the raw data that is generated is then further analyzed using specific softwares which can reduce the information in the chromatogram and reveal the identity of the peptides subsequently leading to the identification of the proteins i hope you got a very good glimpse of doing the mass spec uh, based proteomics workflow but how one could use this same set of information these uh, you know workflow for a, you know any case study for any biological problem in this slide i have invited one of my phd student uh, shulin namukherjee to talk about how she has used uh, this mass spectrometry based proteomics workflow in her own research very briefly she will walk you through the steps and the strategies for data analysis and in a nutshell that how it can give you some biologically meaningful insight from a clinical problem so now that you have an idea about the uh, chromatogram that comes out after your mass spectrometry experiment we will talk about how to interpret it and how to do the protein identification so you can interpret the raw data coming out using several uh, freely available software as well as commercial software so one of the softwares is maxquant and uh, another software that i will be giving you a little glimpse of is proteome discoverer so what you what what the software does is it takes the raw data uh, into account and then it does the uh, spectral matching and counting and also it uses a database uh, that's a background database so if your sample is from human origin you give a homo sapiens database and then it uh, it does the annotation of the peaks also uh, in the process of sample annotation from raw data you can also do a grouped analysis for example in this case if you are looking at a cancer uh, sample wherein you are comparing the normal uh, or the uh, non tumor samples with the tumor samples you can give different grades of the tumor for example this is grade 1 this is grade 2 and this is grade 3 of a tumor and these are the normals so when you annotate the raw files in such a way that uh, you always already specify that which group it belongs to the software then uh, takes into account these considerations and then we uh, it gives you the details of uh, how much of the protein abundance is present across these groups so that you can uh, know whether you have uh, some dysregulated proteins that can be subsequently used for uh, identification of biomarkers so for the setting up of the workflow 
first of all we do the database search as you can see here here we have used sequest ht and also uh, it the, the these are the steps that are followed that is you can uh, annotate the parameters that is for example you have put a parameter of mass tolerance which is 10 ppm then you have uh, uh, used the charge states and then the retention time also here you can see the spectrum files will be taken and then it will go to the spectrum selector then it will go to the database and then you, uh, there's another uh, another workflow which is called the percolator other than these things you can also use other uh, search engines like you can uh, use mascot in parallel with sequest ht and then uh, if there are unmatched spectra it can go to the next search engine also for example in this case it is the spectrum confidence filter and then furthermore you can also use other uh, softwares for knowing into the uh, other modifications present in the peptide for example if you want to know whether your peptide is glycosylated or phosphorylated then you can use these kind of uh, uh, this kind of filtering to to annotate those changes in your peptide so how does the data look so as you can see after get going through a lot of uh, filtering criteria the data that comes out is of high confidence because you have uh, uh, put on stringent filters so that whatever hits you get are uh, the the true data and not false positives so here you can see that the there are diff different tabs uh, associated here for example this is the this is this is where you have annotated whether the protein fdr confidence how much is the level so here you can see all of these proteins that have been identified have high fdr so false discovery rate is a statistical value that estimates the number of false positive identifications among the peptide and it is also a measure of certainty for the identification as in how much you are confident that the protein you have identified is a true match then we also have a contaminant database which we can plug in in the workflow the contaminant database will actually uh, indicate uh, presence of keratin or serum albumin which are high abundant protein and often are uh, responsible for giving false positives or masking your actual protein of interest so as you can see here also in our data we have got serum albumin and the software has marked marked here as true so while all the other proteins there is false in in case of serum albumin it has marked as true so you can remove this kind of protein in case of your uh, subsequent analysis other than that we will also have a plethora of information like the uh, unique proteins so the unique proteins again gives you an idea as to how confident uh, you are of identifying the particular protein that has been ascribed to for example the first hit which is a neuroblast differentiation protein has 370 unique peptides that means the mass spectrometer has encountered the peptide 370 times or it has uh, actually uh, annotated the protein the software has annotated the protein with very high confidence then you can also know about the uh, the score which is the score that is uh, given to uh, by, by the search engine and many other details so thus you will have all the information available after you have run the protein through uh, after you have run your raw file through a uh, software and the software has different uh, tabs that you can customize and you can set your parameters that you are looking for so basically we have started from here that is we have taken a cancer uh, sample and normal samples we have used a patient cohort then we have extracted the protein and then we have run the samples in the mass spectrometer so after doing all the all these exercise you have got raw values you have got uh, different uh, peaks that you now you need to know that what are they so you have used a software which i told you that you can either use a freely available software like maxquant or a licensed software whichever resource is available to you and then you can use the software and the various parameters to now do the data mining so after the data mining what you are actually looking for is a, uh, is something like this wherein you can see a clear difference between condition a and condition b so as you can see there are a signature list of proteins which are highly abundant in condition a and there are a signature list of proteins which are highly abundant in condition b so these are indicative of the actual biological changes that are happening in the patient sample furthermore you can do the data curation and network analysis using again doing several bioinformatic software like string db metabo analyst etc and now you can see that after doing uh, the whole uh, exercise of using mass spectrometer and the software for annotating the data we get the uh, we can map the proteins in various networks like this and then we can also see 
which are the ones which are uh, classifying the different grades of tumor or the uh, or uh, are different between the control and the cancer samples for example these are these are a set of markers as you can see so you can see in this one this is very high in the uh, uh, c sample which is the control sample and relatively low in the grade 2 samples similarly there is a reverse trend for this protein you can see qo4637 so this is again showing a sequential increase that is it is low in the control samples and going high as the tumor progresses so thus using uh, these kind of tools you can uh, answer a lot of biological questions all right so we started with uh, a workflow of mass spectrometry based proteomics we talked about how to do the protein quantification protein digestion again we have talked about peptide quantification then you are ready for doing the lc ms ms based analysis so liquid chromatography and ms parameters what we generate the chromatograms how to interpret chromatograms and how to review the whole data set make more meaningful insight from the this data for the clinical case studies i hope this gives you very basic of course it's not so detailed but you know a good glimpse of the workflow involved in doing ms based proteomics a lot can be done using mass spectrometry based proteomics we have just talked about protein identification and label free quantification workflows you can also think about quantitative proteomics which i talked in the theory class earlier about using eye track or tmts and those workflows can be very useful as well but as long as you have done this workflow of sample preparation and their separation very well then you are ready for the quantitative proteomics based workflow as well thank you